She was a bad girl, she was loose, she was immoral, and it's so underselling Lola. Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the most shocking women you won't find in the history books. Oh, I see, you want to talk about my generous gifts. I don't know, I haven't seen them. To the monastery. Number 10, Betty Page. We all know the phrase pinup girl, but Betty Page, she was the pinup girl. During the 50s, Betty's picture was everywhere on hundreds of books and magazine covers monthly calendars, and even playing cards. With her iconic look and propensity for style, Paige made an indelible mark in the pin-up field and set the standard for those who came after her. They keep saying that I'm some sort of sexual innovator. I never thought of any of my poses as being sexual in any way. I never had anything like that in my mind when I was posing. Her modelling career started in the early 1950s when she became one of the world's first famous bondage models, posing for pinups with strong BDSM themes. She later became one of the first Playboy Playmates of the Month, taking the centerfold spot for January 1955. Paige and her approach to sexuality took the world and the 1950s by storm. Betty Page is the last great icon of the 1950s. Like James Dean and Marilyn Monroe, she brought something modern to the era. Number 9, Georgiana Cavendish, Duchess of Devonshire. Georgiana, this has gone much too far. It is beneath our dignity. All London is talking. Let them talk. Some might have considered Princess Diana a bit of a scandalous lady in her own right, but one of her ancestors has her beat. Georgiana Cavendish, the Duchess of Devonshire, is the great-great-great-great-aunt of Princess Di. And boy, does she have a story to tell. I have many faults, as you well know. Not least among them is my ability to draw attention. Perhaps we could use that to our advantage. Georgiana lived in the late 18th century, but she didn't let the morals of the time restrain her. Although married, she had her own affairs, and at one point her husband's mistress openly lived with the couple. She had a famously ruinous gambling addiction, reportedly spending in one night what some people could live on for 20 years. If you want to know more about Georgiana, you can check out 2008's The Duchess. We come away to Bath to get away from London, and all of London has come away to Bath. <laughs> Number 8. Émilie du Châtelet You've probably heard of Isaac Newton, the guy who discovered gravity, and one of the guys who developed calculus. But we're willing to bet you probably haven't learned of Émilie du Châtelet. She started with how do we know anything with any kind of certainty? How do we know what we know? Then she talked about the role of God. Then she talked about space, about time, about matter. What is it? This French philosopher and mathematician was extremely important to Newton's legacy and a maverick in her own right. She is responsible for the French translation of Newton's book of the basic laws of physics, a translation still considered the standard today. I leave it to you to look at the list of her total published works, and you'll see that on the one hand there are these works of moral philosophy, many of which she did the initial reading for with Voltaire, and then these works of physics and of what we would call science. She also had a famous romance with the philosopher Voltaire, and for a long time was only known for her involvement with him. Well, we're here to set the record straight that this maligned woman was important in her own right. Madame de Châtelet forged an intriguing middle path between the Leibnizian view and the Newtonian view that was prominent in her day. And most intriguingly, finally, in that way, she actually prefigured some of the work that we would associate with Kant. Number 7. Sidonie Gabrielle Colette There are so many famous one-named icons. Cher, Madonna, Beyoncé. Well, go ahead and add Colette to this list. And a whole career can be read as um, conquests for self-emancipation, for independence, for freedom. Colette, whose full name was Sidonie Gabrielle Colette, was a French author and intellectual who sometimes moonlighted as an actress, journalist, and mime. Her most famous works include Gigi and The Tendrils of the Vine. Throughout her life, she attributed her ability to focus on her writing to her husband, Henri Gautier Villard, one of France's most well-known libertines at the time. You, you could write. What? Those stories you told me of saint Sauveur last year. My school stories? Yes, that could be Willie's next novel. Gautier Villard introduced Colette to the bohemian lifestyle in Paris and even encouraged her romantic entanglements with women. What a guy. 
However, she and Gautier Villar did eventually divorce, leading Colette to come into her own without the help of a man. You found me when I knew nothing. You moulded me to your own designs, to your desires. And you thought that I could never break free. Well, you're wrong. Number six, Tallulah Bankhead. Are you in entertainment? Yes, darling. If there's one place you're going to find a scandalous, strong-willed woman, it's Hollywood. Mae West comes to mind when thinking about the women of the classic film era who didn't care what anyone thought of them. But nobody did things quite like Tallulah Bankhead. Why don't you take about 20 or 30 seconds and describe yourself? 30 seconds? <laughs> Gracious! Well, now let me see. If I may be wildly optimistic, I would say that I was the, um, divinely impossible. Bankhead was passionate about liberal causes, helping foster children and assisting families who needed to escape during the Spanish Civil War. She also had numerous affairs with both men and women that she was unapologetic about. She was romantically connected to such notable women of the time as Greta Garbo, Marlene Dietrich, and Billie Holiday. Life is short. <laughs> we only passed this way once. Why not live a little? Number five, Mary Wollstonecraft. I earnestly wish to point out in what true dignity and human happiness consists. I wish to persuade women to endeavour to acquire strength, both of mind and body. Mary Wollstonecraft might have been once best known for being the mother of author Mary Shelley, or for her unconventional romantic dalliances. But now, while we still love to discuss those more sordid aspects of her life, this scandalous woman was also one of the most important feminist philosophers. A radical publisher agreed to publish Wollstonecraft's first book, Thoughts on the Education of Daughters and she went on to become a regular contributor to the analytical review Literary Magazine. Her most important work took on the idea that women were fundamentally inferior to men, arguing that men and women should be treated the same. She had two affairs when she was unmarried, not caring that she would be looked down on by British society. This was a woman who didn't mind what anyone thought. She acknowledged the existence of female sexual desire and criticised the impact marriage was having on women's lives. Today, Wollstonecraft is also recognised for paving the way for women to explore the possibilities of same-sex and non-traditional relationships. Number 4. Lola Montez Started from the bottom, now we're here. If there was anyone who embodied that sentiment, it was Lola Montez. Not just a performer and able to manipulate, which we do know she was able to manipulate people, but also that she, there was an intelligence behind it and she was doing it to further her career and to look after herself, like who of us wouldn't want to do that. Reportedly the inspiration for the Sherlock Holmes character Irene Adler, Lola was born Eliza Gilbert in Ireland. She married at 16, but when she separated from her husband five years later, she decided to take the stage name Lola as a professional dancer. That was her meal ticket, dancing. But really what she loved was power and politics. She had numerous affairs before she became the mistress of King Ludwig I of Bavaria. The king made her a countess, and with her newfound power, she pushed the country towards liberalism and anti-Catholicism. Montez might have started as just a dancer, but she became one of the most powerful women in Bavaria. Are you upset with me because I can perform deeds that have left their mark on society, or that you cannot? I'm not merely consisted of living a life that contains drinking tea, powdering, flirting, going to the opera and sleeping. Number three, Evelyn Nesbitt. If you're the woman at the centre of the crime of the century, then you're definitely going to be on this list. Nesbitt was an American actress, model and chorus girl, perhaps most famous for her marriage to railroad mogul Harry Kendall Thor, and what ensued after. It had everything. Society, money, rage, lust, envy. Thor was older than Nesbitt and had a history of mental instability. Things came to a head when he murdered the architect Stanford White, who had been romantically involved with Nesbitt before their marriage. But is obsessed with Stanford. She, that is the way, she, she can't get away from Stanford. She goes with the person obsessed with hatred of Stanford, which is really just the other side of the coin. The sensationalist reporting was extremely unfair towards Nesbitt, who was only in her early 20s at the time. She eventually made a small career in show business, including vaudeville, burlesque and films. I can smoke, work, go out and take a drink, and I don't have to worry what some hubby's going to think. 
Number two, Agrippina the Younger. It's always the woman behind the scenes. And as the wife, and niece unfortunately, to Emperor Claudius and the mother of Nero, Agrippina had a lot of sway. The best connected woman in the Roman Principates and arguably in the whole of Roman history, up to the lifetime of Tacitus at least, um, and a very powerful one. During the Julio-Claudian dynasty of the Roman Empire, she was one of its most prominent female figures. Nero wasn't originally supposed to be in line for the throne, but Agrippina was the one who schemed him into succession. Create the ideal emperor. Vanity. No. Only if pride leads you to it. Claudius found out about this plot, but died before he could do anything to stop it. Rumours swirled that Agrippina had poisoned him. She would continue to have great power over her son as emperor until her untimely death. Her influence over her son was said to be so great that he was haunted by her ghost for the rest of his life. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honourable mentions. Hypatia, the great Roman martyr of philosophy. She refined scientific instruments, wrote math textbooks, and developed a more efficient method of long division. But perhaps her most significant contributions to intellectual life in Alexandria came through her teaching. Isadora Duncan, a trailblazer of dance who met a tragic end. You got attractability! You'll make your fortune here! It's not my fortune I'm after, it's my destiny. Lady Godiva, riding naked through town on a horse definitely gets you remembered. Where did you hear this? Well, it it's a story from the early 13th century, and then I guess people changed it and you know, added stuff like Peeping Tom. And... What, so the earliest reports of this story are 150 years from now. How do those people know anything about me? Yeah, fair point. Eleanor of Aquitaine, the queen of not one, but two countries. I dressed my maids as Amazons and rode bare-breasted halfway to Damascus. Louis had a seizure and I damn near died of windburn. Like the troops were dazzled. Agnès Sorel, a royal mistress and muse. And for her to have the love of a king and be the first official mistress, she sits next to the king and her children carry the Valois name. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Julie Dubini. There's a lot of mystery surrounding Jules, even for her most basic biographical information. So I'm gonna try my best and you'll just have to believe me, okay? While Julie Dubini has inspired so much lore, it's rare that we ever really talk about her. Known as Mademoiselle Maupin, or La Maupin, she was a fencing master, a world traveler, and an opera singer. She had a penchant for dressing in men's clothing and had many romantic relationships with both men and women. One of the greatest stories has Dobini blatantly kissing a woman at a ball and then proceeding to defeat three men in three separate duels. She beat them all, like, badly, like, they were all super embarrassed, crying like little babies. She sang in operas across Europe, only retiring to a convent once the love of her life passed away in 1705. If we missed your favourite scandalous historical women, let us know in the comments below. What did you say? I told her given the choice between them and me. You choose me. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.